Good morning, sisters and brothers. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and on behalf of the ministerial team of the UCCP Cosmopolitan Church to our service this morning. This is the first Sunday of the month, Christian Education Sunday uh, for this Christian Education Month in the calendar of the United Church of Christ in the Philippines. I am happy that today we have had greetings from our chair of the Board of Christian Education and Nurture in our church, uh, the, our uh, sister Evelyn uh, Mantilla Uriza, and we also had greetings from uh, Pastor J.M. Ricafort of the LCSMC Christian Education and Nurture Committee and the Reverend Ann Oriarte of the National Christ Board of Christian of the Commission on Christian Education and Nurture of the United Church of Christ in the Philippines. So uh, again, on behalf of our team, I welcome you all to this service this morning. We would like to uh, also make uh, announcements. Uh, Greetings. We have birthday celebrants uh, today, and the, if you are celebrating your birthdays today, I greet you all happy birthday. And if you are celebrating your wedding anniversary, uh, please uh, be assured that you have all our warmest greetings and uh, wishes that you will have many, many more years in your life together. We will uh, make further announcements as to the status of our worship service next week. But today, because of the IATF announcement, uh, no face-to-face -face services will take place uh, uh, today. And uh, in fact, we have recommended that there will be no face-to-face -face services this month because the cases of COVID are really rising. In fact, yesterday, it was more than 20,000. And so, once again, let us join our hearts together as we worship God uh, with, with God in spirit and in truth. Amen. In behalf of the Board of Christian Education and Nurture, UCCP Cosmopolitan Church, I bring you greetings of peace. This will be our second virtual Christian Education Month celebration, and God has been so faithful in the midst of this pandemic. The limitations we see each time we gather virtually cannot and shall not hinder us from responding to our call. Thus, we maximize any platform available for us to continuously nurture each other in the faith through our BCEN programs. May God's life-giving spirit be with us in all our endeavors as we collectively build each other up in this difficult time. Greetings of peace and love to all our brothers and sisters who are present here in this hour of worship. September comes again with our deliberate efforts of highlighting the educational ministry in the life of our church. And as we know, September in our UCCP calendar is Christian Education and Nurture Month. It is a time when we are reminded of our education and nurture tasks as a church and to examine the impact of our programs in the lives of our members. Because of the pandemic, we are greatly challenged to find new and creative ways to continue doing our educational activities for our children, for the, our young people and adults as well, by maximizing different platforms available for our use. And so we greatly appreciate local churches who were able to overcome these challenges by tapping their resources, especially human resource, within their faith community. And from our end, being the program coordinator for Christian Education and Nurture, we continue to 
prepare and produce resource materials available for all churches for liturgical and study purposes. And these materials are available on our website. So we encourage all churches to maximize these materials intended to help us deepen our understanding of our faith and our witness. And as we continue to wrestle through this pandemic, may all our nurturing efforts and processes help bring persons into the vital and saving experience of God in Jesus Christ so they may respond to the call of our times in faith and love. God, God bless us all. Mabiyayang araw po sa ating lahat bilang kaanib ng United Church of Christ in the Philippines ating ipinagdiriwang ang Christian Education and Nurture Month ngayong buong buwan ng September. Binabati po namin kayo mula sa Christian Education and Nurture Committee ng Lolan Cavite South Manila Conference na kinabibilangan ni na Reverend Noemi Encila, DM Hasmin Simon, Dr. Elinda Centurias, Brother Lindon Guerrero, Sister Gloria Rodrigo, Sister Jill Jana Manalo at ng inyong lingkod na batay sa eklesyal na taong tema na bringing good news of light and hope to the masses in these changing times. Patuloy po namin panalangin ang paglago ng pananampalataya at paglilingkod sa ating mga kapatiran sa iglesia kasama ang Ministeryo ng Pagtuturo ng Board of Christian Educators bilang katuwang ng ating mga manggagawa. Muli ang aming mainit na pagbati at pagpalain tayo ng mapagbiyayang Diyos. God bless po sa UCCP Cosmopolitan Church ngayong pagdiriwang ng Christian Education and Nurture Man. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Praise God for His faithfulness. This month we are celebrating Christian Education Month. I thank God for this privilege of being part in His great work. Whatever challenges, indecisions, and fears that we are facing, just remember that this shall pass. By the grace of God, we will overcome. May we continue to celebrate and may Jesus be glorified in all we do. Thank you everyone and have a blessed Sunday. We gather in the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer of the earth and all its creatures. Praise be to the Holy Trinity. God is sound and life creator of the universe, source of all life whom the angels sing, wondrous light of all mysteries, known or unknown to humankind, and life that lives in all. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. God is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them. God remains faithful forever. God upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. God sets prisoners free. God gives sight to the blind. God lifts up those who are bowed down. God loves the righteous. God watches over the foreigner. God sustains the fatherless and the widow, but frustrates the ways of the wicked. God reigns forever. Praise the Lord. Let's proclaim the salvation. 
shine from day to day with joyful songs of praise. Let God's glory be clearly heard in the midst of all the tribes and nations, and to all people we proclaim the wonders of salvation. God is worthy of all. Sanctuary of our God, we can see the wonder, strength, and beauty in this giving our hearts so glad. Acknowledge the Lord's glory, let us sing to the source of life, bringing our lives a sacrifice. Worship God in the God, we forever bless all the heavens resound with souls with the land and seas in celebration and the plates clap their hands with joy in praise exalt creation let us sing praises to our God with such spirit beyond God belong, our God forever strong. Let us pray, Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be. Father and Mother of us all, loving God, in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echoes through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your beloved community of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love now and forever. Amen. Praise be to you, our Lord, through our sister, Mother Earth, who sustains and governs us, and who produces various fruit with colored flowers and herbs. Our sister, Mother Earth, now cries out to us because of the harm we have inflicted on her by our irresponsible use and abuse of the goods with which God has endowed her. This is why the earth herself, burdened and laid waste, is among the most abundant and maltreated of our poor. She groans in childbirth, and so we confess. Jesus Christ could not find a place to lay his head. Because of our will to dominate, Millions of our human family are displaced from their homes. Many lack access to clean water, sanitation, and dignified places for personal hygiene. Have mercy on us for the sake of the earth and all that is in it. Foxes of the field and birds of the air have a place to call home because we misuse the land the soil water and air habitats are desecrated and millions of species no longer have a home have mercy on us for the sake of the earth and all that is in it 
your promise was to be a blessing for all the peoples of the earth. But when we exploit the gifts of creation, indigenous lands are devastated, and those who live close to the earth lose their ways of life. Have mercy on us for the sake of the earth and all that is in it. The mustard seed is great because it provides shelter for many, but we seek security for ourselves instead of mutual care and faithful hospitality towards our co-creatures. Have mercy on us for the sake of the earth and all that is in it. Let us remember that we ourselves are dust of the earth. Our very bodies are made of her elements. We breathe her sacred air and we receive life and refreshment from her sacred waters. May we hear, may we hear it as a promise and a calling. Turn us, O God, from our desire to unroot ourselves from our home in the garden and from our will to dominate your earth. Call us again to till and to keep. Gather us into the power of just relationships that heal and sustain. Enlighten us by your spirit that renews the face of your earth and safeguards a home for all. Amen. in Christ, we are becoming a new creation, one home, one body, in the Spirit. Let us share the peace of our Lord to one another. Let us pass that peace to one another. Peace be upon all of you. Peace uh, to everyone who's here in the Angela Valdez uh, Chapel. And let us come to God in prayer as we uh, together think of all the myriads of remembrances and all the friends who are not well and all the members of this church who are not well and those of other churches and countries of the world who are suffering from COVID. Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, we thank you that we can worship you today in spirit and in truth and in the beauty of your holiness. Thank you, O oh God, for this luxury of being able to worship you in peace, unlike other situations in the world which are disturbed by the staccatos of firing and unpeace that are going on, especially 
in Afghanistan. We thank you, O God, that you have brought us together. Despite the fact that we cannot see each other, you have brought us together in spirit and in the comradeship and the fellowship one with another in this church. We pray that as we continue with our worship today, your spirit will be upon us. And as we are here, we remember all those of our sisters and brothers who are not well in our church. You know all of them, O oh God. Please take care of them, whether they be in the uh, Tagalog service that is going to be opened soon, whether they be in the Visayan service or in the English service, please, we ask you and we urge you to touch their bodies and heal them, O oh God. We ask you to heal our country and heal our people. Bring sanity to our political system so that we may elect a leadership next year that truly takes care of the needs of our people instead of taking care of their own pockets and their own welfare. Give us leaders, O oh God, who will have the interests of the people at heart and who will serve us to the utmost of their abilities. O oh God, as we continue to worship you this morning, may your spirit guide us and illumine us. We ask you, O oh God, to bless all those in our church who are going to go through this program of Christian education, especially the young people and the children. Bless them, O oh God. Guide them in the way they should go. Train them up and help us train them and make them grow as responsible members of your church and citizens of our country. We pray for the program of our church, for all the uh, plans that we have laid, for the uh, planned uh, concert in December. We thank you that the concert organizing committee has been formed and that the finance subcommittee has also been formed as well as the program subcommittee and that the steering committee has also been formed and identified. All these are going on, O oh God, and we are grateful for these. We are also grateful that tomorrow the uh, that we are also grateful, O oh God, that uh, yesterday we have had a, a session with the council members to discuss how to raise funds for the church and meet its budget. We now pray, O oh God, that you will bless all our plans and enable us, O oh God, to realize them and to give us all the wherewithals to uh, attain all our goals. We pray, O oh God, that today the speaker in both the English service and in the Visayan service would deliver the message that the people need. And we uh, also pray that all those of us who will be listening to her would understand the urgency of taking care of our home, of this earth that you have given to us in this season of the spirit and the season of taking care of our creation. We ask you, O oh God, to continue to um, take care of all those of us who are not well. We pray all of this, O oh God, in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen and amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verses 1 to 2, 8 to 9, and 22 to 23. 
A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Whoever saws injustice reaps calamity, and the rod they wield in fury will be broken. The generous will themselves be blessed, for they share their food with the poor. Do not exploit the poor because they are poor, and do not crush the needy in court, for the Lord will take up their case and will exact life for life. The New Testament reading is taken from James chapter 2, verses 1 to 10, 14 to 17. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes all also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, Here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, You stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen. My dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of him to whom you belong, if you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. People of God, the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 7, verses 24 to 37. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered the house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First, 
Let the children eat all they want, he told her. For it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk, and they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. And he took him aside, away from the crowd. Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears, then he spat and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephipta, which means be open. At this man, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosed, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well. They said, he even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If we truly do believe 
Let us pray. O Lord, our Creator, thank you for the gift of word. And as we reflect on your word, help us to understand and open our hearts to receive your word. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sisters and brothers, today is Christian Education and Nurture Month. And it is also the celebration of the season of creation, which begins from September 1 to October 10, which is also Indigenous Peoples Day. The theme of the season of creation is a home for all, renewing the oikos of God. And I'm using this as the title of the sermon. Let me first congratulate the ministerial team for their hard work and creative work, especially as they prepare for the video messaging for our Sunday school and also for the worship service. Especially, I would like to mention the children's time, which is a program that features Lila and Lolo Al. In the past, it was I don't know, was she Tita Grace or Pastor Grace? But uh, since Pastor Al came, he became Lolo Al. And it is the most awaited program, not only of our children here in UCCP Cosmopolitan Church, but other children in other churches, not only in Manila and Cavite, but also in other parts of the Philippines, watching this every Sunday at 9 a.m. The parents of the children are also enthusiastically watching and enjoying the learning experience of children's time. I appreciate the way DM Jeffrey Ramirez Jr. and Reverend Veronica Tiostayo work together to find the appropriate songs, stories, memory verse, and artwork for children during this period of the pandemic. And perhaps it will have to continue even if the pandemic is over, because it's a very effective program. And everyone is still mysteriously finding out who is Lila. I realized that Lila has many fans. One time when Lila had to rest, people were looking for her presence in children's time. They were not contented to just see the, and hear Pastor Al give the announcement. So fortunately, DM Jeff gave the children some artwork to do. And this takes place, the Sunday school lesson, which usually is done in person. And I would like, I remember Charity Pokulan during the time when I was chair of the Board of Christian Education and Nurture. We even gather the teachers and we have meal together. And then we talk about what they will teach the children. So we had a very good Christian education an orchard worker at the time, during my time, Pastor Grace uh, Innocentes Magan. She was also great in the Ecumenical Theological Seminary. The ministerial team holds Bible study, and there are people who faithfully participate in the study, especially the, the members of the Visayan congregation under Reverend Fritz Jordan Mata. And I heard recently that Alice Mata is also actively helping in the facilitation of the program, which is good because they have a rotating leadership. And then also we have the Del Genta Group, the Christian Youth Fellowship, the Christian Young Adults Fellowship. They all continue the Bible study online. So we don't stop. Even if we are in the pandemic period, the ministerial team is actively working to glorify God. And I think all of us are also very happy because we get to learn about our Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ has not left us. During this pandemic, we have somebody who is with us, caring for us. And uh, I think that's the blessed assurance, indeed, that God is with us. The United Church of Christ in the Philippines, Council of Bishops, 
issued this statement on Christian education. And I quote, the central message of Christian education is Jesus Christ. It endeavors to preach at all times, in all places, no matter what the cost. The transforming message of Jesus Christ and the fullest expression of the kingdom of God. Christian education in nurture is about learning and applying into our daily lives the great commandment and the great commission. On Matthew 22, 36 to 40, Jesus was asked, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, and I quote, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and in another gospel with all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hung on these two commandments. Then we have the great commission. Go therefore and make, the dis make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now, as we deal with Christian education and nurture, there is a part in the Great Commission that tells us, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. So Christian education and nurture is the teaching of the life-changing message of our Lord Jesus Christ. As Pastor Al tells us, it's not enough that you say, I received the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. Yes, it is important, but we have to reflect the life of our Lord Jesus Christ in our lives as we relate with others and with the rest of creation. Christian education and nurture involves telling the stories of Jesus. And as a child, I was always excited to listen to the stories. We have missionary teachers at that time, and then later on, my aunts um, who were teaching Sunday school, and they have this flip chart, and they have, this, they have the characters of the story, like Moses, the baby, and then the man, and all these things, we're always excited to go to Sunday school. And I believe our students, too, are very excited to hear the stories of Jesus. And even as adults, we are always excited because there, there are so many lessons that we can he learn from just one single story. You can repeat that story, and more reflections can come out of those stories. These stories reveal to our discerning minds the fullest expression of the kingdom of God. The lectionary readings for this Sunday presents us with big challenges on the way we love each other. The book of Proverbs, which are collections of wisdom materials from a wide variety of periods, is very clear. The generous will themselves be blessed, for they share their food with the poor. The poor has a special place in God's kingdom. It is not just to exploit the poor because they are poor and not to crush the needy in court. Now, this passage from Proverbs reminds me of the Board of Evangelism and Mission. At the early part of the pandemic, when we were still in UCCP Paradahan, they were giving out food to the street dwellers. And I was asked by Attorney James Raterta when I told him that I'm very impressed. And then he said, did they share the word of God? Um, so I asked Pastor Fritz, and he said that they, have, that they have a sharing of the Word of God, and they even distribute Bibles to the people, to the street dwellers. So I hope that this, uh, this feeding of the poor will, will restart this September. But we don't know because of the problem of uh, COVID and the guidelines set by the IATF that you know you cannot really go out and this new covid mutant which is delta vi variant is really um, very highly transmissible so but 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 this this program 
uh, this saying from the book of Proverbs remind me of this particular program. In the New Testament, writing to the Jewish Christians who were dispersed outside Israel, James, the brother of Jesus, wrote that the royal law found in the scripture is love your neighbor as yourself. When we love our neighbor, there is no favoritism. We treat people equally and without distinction. We learn from the acts of mercies to the poor, and that includes us who engage in these deeds. I mean, we cannot just give out food to the poor without learning something more about the poor in our midst. James asked the Jewish Christians, if we see our brother or our sister without clothes and daily food, how can we demonstrate the love of God? If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? True faith will lead to a difference in lifestyle and change our relationship with our sisters and brothers. A person who listens reflectively to the cries of the poor does not just share money to a faceless cause. The one who shares empathize or feel the pain and have compassion just like Jesus. I remember in our mealtime together with Pastor Fritz that he tells me about their neighbor, Michelle, and he knows that Michelle has lived beside uh, the pastoral house number one for two decades. And she has been um, finding some means to support her and her family. So it's time, you know, when they have developed friendship and they have learned from each other, talked to each other. So it's not just enough, you know, that we have the poor amidst us, but there is also a friendship that develops. In fact, Jesus would invite the poor to eat with him on the same table, a good example of nourishing the dignity of the poor and developing a relationship among equals, for we are all created by God. In today's gospel, Mark has placed two healing stories together, the Syrophoenician woman's daughter and the deaf mute man. These two healings took place as Jesus moved from the center, which is the Jewish territory, to the margins, which is the Gentile territory. The first story presents us the encounter of Jesus with an unnamed Syrophoenician woman, a Gentile from Tyre. Gentiles were considered unclean and even called by the Jews pejoratively as dogs. The unnamed woman begged Jesus to heal her daughter. The initial response of Jesus was that the children must first be fed. It isn't right to take away their food and feed it to the dogs. Despite the Jewish cultural tradition of calling Gentiles dogs and Jesus' unflattering response, which meant that he was sent only to the people of Israel, the stage is set to demonstrate the faith and wisdom of a Gentile woman. In her response, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. The woman understood that Jesus the Messiah came for the Jews first, but not only, and she took the chance that if Jesus had plans to reach the Gentiles later, Jesus could make an exception and heal her daughter. The woman's courage to dialogue with Jesus in this way, and her humility saved her daughter. Jesus said, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. He moved on to the next destination and reached the Decapolis from Sidon. There some people brought a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. It was not the man who directly came to Jesus. It was other people who brought, Jesus, who brought him to Jesus. It was these concerned people who begged him to lay his hand on him. Perhaps we should remember that many of the good things that happen to us come from the acts of mercies and prayers of others on our behalf. Are we challenged by these stories of Jesus going into Gentile territory, engaging in God's mission of healing and feeding the poor? Sisters and brothers, there is a beautiful song composed by Gary Granada about mission. Hanggat may isang nagugutom, hanggat may isang nauuhaw, Hanggat mayroong mga pusong nagdurusa at namamanglaw, 
tayo ay mayroong gawain. Tayo ay mayroong misyon. Hanggat may isip at damdamin na ng tugon, tayo ay mayroong gawain. Tayo ay mayroong misyon. Sisters and brothers, we are also challenged to care for the rest of creation. This is the season of creation. And our neighbor is not just our spouse, our family, our church people, the people who live on the streets, but we also have to think about the whole inhabited earth, the whole oikos of God's kingdom. Oikos means the household of God. So what else? Are we thinking of the earth? Are we thinking of the plants? Well, we have plantitos and plantitas. And that's good. That's great. Are we thinking of um, the, the dogs, the, the cats? Are we thinking of the earth, the soil? Are we thinking that there are millions of microorganisms that live in the soil? And, and therefore, they are also our neighbor. And they also need to be part of our understanding of home. We know that, and we have read in the scripture, especially in the letter of Paul, that creation is groaning in travail because God's creation has been made impoverished. And at this time, it is impoverished by over-exploitation for maximization of profit. When we destroy the trees, when we destroy the, the ecosystem, especially when we get, extract the mines, without any thought of the next generation, succeeding generation, then we make our ecosystem vulnerable. Because if our forests are not protected, then we do not have the forest cover, which becomes the carbon sink. Then we have soil erosion. And when the soil is eroded, the healthy soil is also gone. And also, when the forest is destroyed, the animals are also displaced. The people living in it, like the indigenous peoples, are also displaced. And then, when these things happen, what, there is flood in the plains. And so, even in the USA, just recently, with uh, Typhoon Ida, they have shown in Louisiana the flooding. And we have seen this in China. We've seen this in Europe, not only in our place. And here we have Ali. She's, I just found out she's from St. Bernard. And um, there is a place there where there is a sinkhole. And everything were just, um, the, in fact, some of her cousins also perished in that incident. It's because we have not taken care of our forests. I remember Dr. Portia Mapano Rodriguez. Rodriguez Mapana always telling us, you take care of the forest. Because the forest, if we, we, if we have a good forest, then it will take care of the population. And so sometimes, uh, even our poverty is caused by all this climate uh, crisis that is happening in our midst. So we really need to take care of the household of God. So our theme carries with a question mark, a home for all. So are we really having in our consciousness a bigger home that includes the whole creation. Remember the priestly tradition in Genesis 1 where the creation was mentioned not only people, but also the light, the darkness, and then the stars, the sun, and, and then the land and the sea, and the animals that inhabit the sea and the land, and also the plants that grow, the trees that have seed that are seed bearing, and the birds in the air that even scatters the seed, and then of course the, the human beings were created. So all of these are part of God's creation. The earth belongs to God. Um, recently, Pastor Al and I were invited by this Laudato Si movement, a movement that was started by Pope Francis. And this is a movement that calls for practical solutions in, into this problem about our earth. And I remember that, why is it that we are so detached from the earth? When I was growing up, there was a song that is sung in our congregation in Calapan, and it, it runs this way. This world is not my home. 
I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Do you have that kind of feeling that you are not at home in this world and you'd rather be in heaven? Sisters and brothers, it's important that we love our home, the God-given home that God has given us, the earth, and all the things that is in the earth. As the psalmist says, all of this, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. We need to not to be detached from the earth, which is our home. Well, I think it, it was good when we were still in Southern Christian College, and that is where I had my awakening of my own detachment to Mother Earth. We were promoting organic agriculture, sustainable ecological practices. And some of the people called us buang, foolish people, because why do we have to use uh, organic when they produce so much with inorganic um, fertilizer? But then, of course, we realized that we have to care for the earth, not to destroy the microorganisms that are in there. So the things, for example, the hay that is produced when when we harvest palai, should not be burned, but should be, should be returned to the earth to dry and to, to become part of the earth. And also, um, to also care for the other parts. In fact, they have also this program of palai isdaan. Together with the palayan is the isdaan. So there were many of them that, who are practicing this eventually, and at least three of them became uh, magsasakang scientista. Unfortunately, two of them died, um, Isidro Abrenica and Daniel Hava. But, you know, um, they have introduced the way we could care for creation. Of course, we cannot, um, we could not share that in terms of practice, uh, but we were happy that uh, James Mante and his wife, Lori, will be able to introduce, uh, reuse, uh, re Reduce, reuse, and recycle as part of some practical tips that we can share with others so that everything is not just intellectual. Our vacation church school, and I believe um, Reverend Ver Veronica Estayo would remember this, had for its theme, Ikaw at ako, katiwala ni Cristo. And in this VCS, we meditated on Genesis 2.15. And this verse reminds us that among our co-creatures, the Creator has given humans a special vocation to tend and keep the oikos of God. So we have a responsibility to care for creation, and uh, Jesus extends the realm of God to the least noticed, those pushed to the periphery, and that includes the rest of creation. In the launching of the Manila Church People Ecumenical Fellowship, Bishop Ruel Marigsa um, summarized the statement on one ecumenical family. And there are four C's. The first is celebratory message of the grace that sustained the faith and that the churches are one to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. The second is confessional, and it is asking for forgiveness to the raptured relationships, not only among human beings, but for the rest of creation. The third is correctional message, intended to make amends on the injustices that was done in the 500 years of Christianity, riding on the colonization of the islands by Spain and the North Americans. And the fourth is a charge to do something to stop the degradation of God's household and where every creature finds a home where God's oikos is renewed. And so I call on us, UCCP Cosmopolitan Church, to remember these four C's, celebrate. Celebrate the fact that this month is also the season of creation, that the Christian education and nurture has also dealt with the theme, Ako at Ikaw Katiwala Ni Cristo. And then confess. Confess that we have not really done our best in terms of caring for creation. And correctional, we can do something. We could be plantitos and plantitas we could do re reuse, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Uh, we could 
probably make our homes better. Maybe we don't have to use air condition. I was in, we were informed by Dr. Tony Leachon that some of his patients come from condos where they have air conditioning. And perhaps we need to have a new way of ventilating our rooms because probably the COVID has entered into the air conditioning system. So these are the things that we have to think about. So let me now invite you to a prayer that's, that was made by a season of creation, and this will conclude my message for today. Let us pray. Lord, you have given us a world full of rich resources to feed us all and to provide us with all that the body and mind could need. Yet the poor, including our creation, are still with us, deprived of food, of home, of education and dignity, deprived of healing and of hope. Our creation is broken, O oh God. Forgive our inhumanity. Forgive our selfishness and greed. Forgive our church life and our home life. Forgive us for leaving Christ unfed, unhoused, without healing, and without, without hope. Forgive us and bring ourselves and our possessions back to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We are in receipt of a correspondence from the Conference Minister of the Lowland Cavite South Manila Conference, the Reverend Dr. Ruth Panganiban Villena, uh, requesting us to uh, uh, award or to recognize the work uh, of uh, two members of our church who have completed the lay formation program of the conference. Uh, these two people are, are Dr. Elinda N. Centurias, and the other is uh, Franz Antonio, or Franz Antonio Jr. And um, for this achievement of theirs, having completed the lay formation one, two, and three in the case of Dr. Centurias, and lay formation one and two in the case of Mr. Antonio, they are recommended and they in fact were recommended to become, to be recognized as local lay ministers of the Cosmopolitan Church, United Church of Christ in the Philippines. So uh, for this action, the council, rec we recommended and the council approved that Dr. Centurias and uh, uh, Mr. Antonio will now be recognized as local lay ministers of this church. And I would now request the Reverend Veronica Estayo to read the citation for Dr. Centurias. United Church of Christ in the Philippines, Middle Luzon Jurisdiction, Lowland Cavite South, Manila Conference, Cosmopolitan Church, number 1368 Taft Avenue, corner of Pasible Street, Ermita Manila, Certificate of Recognition is given to Erlinda N. Centurias for having completed the three-year training of the LCSMC Lay Formation Program and for the commitment to serve God in the capacity of a local lay minister in the teaching and preaching ministries of UCCP Cosmopolitan Church. Given this fifth day of September 2021, during the 10 a.m. English worship service at Mary Boyd State Stag Memorial Sanctuary, signed Pastor Alvaro O. Centurius Jr., Administrative Pastor, yours truly, Reverend Veronica Tistayo, BCEN Pastor and Brother Kit Arley D. Kibral, Chairperson of the Church Council. Thank you, uh, Reverend Estayo. We will now uh, call on our brother, June Antonio, 
to uh, receive this uh, certificate uh, of uh, recognition for his being local lay minister. Uh, this certificate of recognition is uh, given to uh, Florante Antonio Jr. for having completed the two-year training of the LCSMC lay formation program and for the commitment to serve God in the capacity of a local lay minister in the teaching and preaching ministries of UCCP Cosmopolitan Church. Given this fifth day of uh, September uh, 2021 during the uh, 10 a.m. Uh, worship service, signed by the same people and uh, on the same day, uh, 2021-5 September. Um, we will also, thank you, congratulations, uh, Dr. Centurias and Mr. Antonio. We also would like to announce that the Council approved the uh, endorsement of Dr. Centurias to undergo the uh, orientation and further training as lay preacher uh, of the conference. Uh, uh, she will undergo an examination and other, and other procedures and will become a lay preacher in the future. And when that happens, she can be assigned to a local church when there is no other person who can be assigned, whether they be lay, pre I mean, uh, uh, licensed or ordained okay. ministers. So, pag wala, uh, si Dr. Centurias is assigned on. Uh, Reverend Sayo, do you have anything more to say? Well, I would like to say just congratulations uh, to all of them. You are the director of Christian education, so. Thank you very much. Whenever we join together, we should give thanks and join our hearts and minds together and think of all creation and the Creator's gift. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise.
Let us pray. Abundant One, we offer you these gifts in gratitude for your steadfast guidance in our lives. We pray that these resources will provide ministries to the suffering, food to the hungry, hope to the poor, a spiritual presence to the needy. In the name of the One who suffered for our sake, Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. The Creator be with you and all creation. And also with you. Open your hearts. We open them to our Creator. Let us give thanks to our Creator. It is right to join creation in thanking God. It is right to give you thanks, loving Creator. Your word is the impulse for all things to be, for space, stars, and stardust to appear. For earth to emerge from the deep, for life to be born of earth, and for humans to be born of earth and the spirit. You chose to be born a human being, to become a part of earth, to suffer, die, and rise from death, to redeem humankind, renew creation, and affirm all born of earth and the spirit. Your presence is the living impulse in all things the Christ deep among us, filling earth, land, sea, and air, filling every element and place, filling the grain and the grape. We share with you this day, therefore we proclaim your presence among us. Holy, 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 God of all life, earth and the sea and sky are full of your presence and glorify your name. Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same night he also took the cup after supper gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
Come, for all things are now ready. Come to the table with all your kin and share with all in need. The gift of healing for those in pain, the gift of forgiveness for those in sin, the gift of assurance for those in doubt, and the gift of hope for those in tears. May we who share these gifts share Christ with one another and all our kin. Lamb, Lamb of God, God who takes, takes away, away the sin, sin against of the world, God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God who takes away all sin against earth, earth have, have mercy on us. us. Lamb of God who takes away all sin from the world, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Let us talents and tongues employ, reaching out with a shout of joy. Bread is broken, the wine is poured, Christ is spoken and seen and heard. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, love's about. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, love's about. Christ is able to make us one At the table it sets the tone Teaching people to live to bless Love and word and indeed express Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again Pass the word around, love's abound Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again Pass the word around, love's abound Jesus calls us sin, sins us out, bearing fruit in a world of doubt. Gives us love to tell, bread to share, God Emmanuel everywhere. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, love's about. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, love's about. Let us pray. Now, now may the power of Christ's body and blood reach deep into your heart, your mind and your, and your body to heal your wounds and, and through you to bring healing to earth. In, In Jesus' name, name. Amen. Appears for and so lovely when helping is the task of each of us and caring for one another, sharing what we have, spreading love around. Sadness will be gone, but joy abound. Let me be thus our aim together as we live forget our hating let us be loving like one who came to earth and showed us all the way the great example our lord jesus christ when can we ever learn to love each other for years we have been hating and killing How foolish we human can be We're the only ones suffering for a deed Why can't we reform is what we should say Let peace be the same together as we live Forget our hating, let us be loving Like one who came to earth and showed us all the way The great example of our Lord Jesus Christ Intended for the world by God Creator For right 
righteousness to rule and peace prevail. Where each one would be a neighbor, look at not the skin, nor what the breed would be, but accept the heart that is for our love. Let peace be thus our aim together. We live, forget our hating, let us be loving like one who came to earth and showed us all the way. The great example, our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray, Jesus Christ. Teach us to empathize with earth. Make our spirits sensitive to the cries of creation. Cries for justice from the land, the seas, and the skies. Jesus Christ, make our faith sensitive to the groans of the spirit in creation. Groans of longing for a new creation. Jesus Christ, make our hearts sensitive to the songs of our kin, songs of celebration from the sea, the forest, and the air. Christ, teach us to care. Amen. And now may God, who established the dance of creation, who marveled at the lilies of the field, who transforms chaos to order, lead us to transform our lives and the church to reflect God's glory in creation. Amen and Amen. Lord.